3, 1, 2, 3, hallo, hallo. So, good morning, everybody. So, my name is Marcos del Puerto Garcia. I work at the ABAP uh, Compiler at Virtual Machine Team. Maybe some of you know me already. Hört ihr mich nicht? Hört ihr mich nicht? Hört ihr mich richtig jetzt? So, um, as I told you, I work from the compiler and virtual machine team. Maybe some of you know me already for from many other talks. I'm here with my colleague Guru Raman, who usually who works right now in RAP, integrating the purchase order and the sales order, and we usually work close together to try to. Um, update existing ABAP code or sometimes uh, implementing things, things from scratch in greenfield approachment using modern ABAP. Uh, usually I try to make uh, several talks every year, one, one where I talk all the or present all the new features that we have introduced in ABAP in the last couple of years. Like the last uh, talk that I have at the German speaking user group. And sometimes we have also a workshop when you can get hands-on to the new features. And this one has a slightly different format. When I told my mom I was presenting again, I was uh, giving a talk, she told me, again, you? Yes, mom, I'm the one in the team with the social skills. You? Yeah, remember, we are in the software industry. Okay, that's it. So as I told you before, this um, presentation has a slightly different format. We are talking about the experience because I always talk about all the new features that we have built in, in ABAP. But when you go to the real world, to the real ABAP, sometimes migrating existing code or using the new features is not that straightforward as with the exercises in a prepared workshop. Yeah. So I want to make you think and uh, know what, which things you have to take into consideration when using those new language features, which uh, uh, problems or uh, pitfalls uh, we have found when using them on migrating code. So it's very important that I have a legal disclaimer. So in case I tell something about performance which does not match your current system, you cannot um, sue me. Yeah. So first, I will give a small overview about the features that uh, I'm presenting. The, we have three exercises. Maybe the presentation is slightly shorter than 45 minutes, but I did not want to overdo it because it's quite tough. Yeah? So I'm concentrating on three main blocks, corresponding constructor operator, table comprehension and grouping, and filter and another built-in uh, operations. It's supposed to be an advanced ABAP uh, uh, talk, so at least I would expect you to know or at, mean, at least that those features sound familiar to you. Yeah? We have built all those new features to make the code easier to read and in some cases offering be better performance. Yeah? So one of the complaints I usually get from these talks is like, well, I found this code. What does this do? Or how can I improve it? How can it be easier to read? I have no idea. I, I developed those features. I have no idea. So there is no price for writing everything in a table comprehension or something very, very complicated which, which nobody can read. Yeah. So the idea is making the code easier to read, easier to maintain, safer, and in some cases, faster. 
Yeah. Regarding performance, despite we have constructors which are very fast in some scenarios, it does not mean that you may find a very specific use case or a generic uh, use case or a small deviation of what I present here that you can build on your own and maybe slightly faster. Yeah. So let's get started with assigning fields. I have prepared a very small exercise. All those exercises are based on real code, but I have removed or simplified many comments or, or operations which are not relevant for the example. Yeah. So we can get started with a quite easy loop where I iterate over a table, assigning a field symbol. And there I have in the line different fields which I want to assign. So one of the advantages of those new constructor operators that we have introduced is that as soon as you see them, you can identify, you can have an idea what you want to achieve. Yeah? So here I just see a loop, and this is quite easy because I have removed many comments and expression and so on. But the only thing that I want to create here is assigning one table to another, mapping some fields, and then adding it to a table. So how could I do it with a new ABAP uh, constructor, a new ABAP feature? So we can go here, and we have corresponding. So corresponding is a constructor operator we have, which has the same semantics of move corresponding. It allows you to map components based on name. And if there is no name equality, you can specify it yourself. In this case, I use it for demonstration purpose, the same names. So from the source name will be mapped to name, unit will be mapped to, to unit, and you have a nested mapping. And I have added except, which means even if there is name equality, do not assign the fields. Yeah, so it will be just the very same code as we have over here. And corresponding is a constructor operator, which is a block operator that which is designed for a very specific purpose, assigning fields between a source and a destination table. And it should be the very best at doing that. Maybe you have a very borderline example which does not do that, like I have one single line, yeah? or there is uh, just two fields that I want to move, but it's optimized for very high amounts of data. Yeah? So you could rewrite that code using just the single line, or well, more lines, but just the single constructor operator. And as soon as you see corresponding, you know, what, you know what you want to achieve, not with this loop, which is not that easy to read. And it feels more natural, because in the natural language, or when you are trying to do things, you say, well, I want to construct a table. That way of thinking, like, I want to iterate over all the lines of that table and do that, that, that's the way we have learned to think to program, but it's not the natural way to think when we do things. Yeah? And then, then comes a slightly more complex example from a colleague and says, well, I do not have only fields, but I have also a value. In 789, the kernel 789, which is, I think, 2302, we introduce a new clause, clause in corresponding, which allows you to map variables. Let's see how it looks. So, remove this one so I can see. You can see better. So now we have that clause, which means code name will have always the value real. Yeah. There are, uh, when using those expressions, there are two limitations. We do not have bindings. This means the right-hand side cannot have any kind of reference to the current line, to the destination line, to the previous line, anything like that. Yeah, And everything will be evaluated at the beginning. That's uh, very important in the example that we will see next. We do not want to allow any kind of binding because um, then, it will be much harder to read. It will be also sometimes cumbersome of the overhead that we have to introduce to deliver a proper error handling will be maybe too big. And what we say is, is if you want to have table bindings, so for example, something like a current line, current line, you have to use something else. Yeah? And it should be 
still faster than with what we have seen here. Yeah? So we have here the loop. Make it smaller. So we have here the loop, and now instead of just mapping fields, we want also to map a variable or a constant in this case. Why is it important that we just evaluate everything at the beginning? As I said, those expressions will be evaluated all of them at the beginning. If we go to a more complex example, like somebody comes to me and says, well, it's not just a constant. I want to make a full flavor expression. Like, if my variable is greater than three, I want to use this value and this other value. Well, this presents a performance problem because you have a loop. And every single time that you execute the loop, the, this condition will be evaluated in the loop. Yeah. Usually, people do uh, an optimization which is called unroll. So they have just an if and two different loops when it's bigger than three or smaller than three, but it's harder to read. It does not feel natural. Yeah. And the experience has also told us that, that if we do not allow um, row binding or line binding, uh, it should be also enough to evaluate everything in the beginning. Usually when you allow uh, using um, another lines, you want to perform operation on, the on those lines. Yeah? But if you just allow, if you allow no bindings, in most cases it's enough when the condition is evaluated at the beginning. Yeah? But you say, well, it's an if. We have here fields and a constant. Well, but ABAP, as I said before, is expression enabled all over the place. So we have here default Rio, but we can also say, I want to use this condition constructor operator, and when the variable is bigger than three, use Rio, and with smaller, use math. And this will be executed one single time at the beginning, and you do not have to unroll anything in the loop. Yeah? Because this example looks quite easy, yeah. But you may have very complex uh, situations when you have to call many functions. Yeah? There are other compilers which automatically, from other languages, which automatically un unroll this if margin something, yeah. But it is a quite ideal case. Usually, you don't have just a constant a, a variable. You may have something like this. If my variable, which is constant, multiplied by a function, which we don't know, do not know what it makes, what side effects it may have, is bigger than three, how do we optimize if it's just, just in a loop? Yeah. So if you use corresponding, you know that you can also use that expressions here as complex as you want, and we will optimize that for you. Okay. And I have a very lax example. These very this first examples are just standard tables. But now I have the very same example as before. But the first uh, example, but this one instead of being a standard table, is a sorted table. Okay. So summary. One example: if I want to assign fields, I can use corresponding, and it should be as fast or much faster than the loop. If I want to assign fields and external variables, it should be, I can do it with corresponding at the new default clause, and it should be much faster. It doesn't matter what, if there are expressions. Yeah. And we will see also an example what happens if we are working with sorted tables. Okay. So let's make a small benchmark.
So we have the single case where I do a loop and just assign the fields per hand. Here I see that corresponding is faster. There may be some small condition or uh, very easy cases where maybe you can buy some, uh, build something with a loop which is slightly faster than the corresponding. Yeah. And we can see also that in the complex condition, as it has to be evaluated every single instance of the loop, corresponding delivers a much faster approach than using a loop. Why is that? If we introduce in the language a new operation which has unknown limitations and where we know what we want to achieve, I can optimize a lot of things in the compiler. Hmm? Or for example, here we see Lacks example. If the corresponding is used in a sorted table, it's 26 versus 20,000 with the very same amount of lines and the corresponding is slightly slower than a standard table, but it's even faster with the, with the sorted table. Why? Because if you tell me, if I have all the information that I need, I mean, I'm a corresponding, I'm just moving fields and that variable, and I know the types of the operators, and can, I can do a lot of optimizations in the code, in the, in the compiler, which otherwise I cannot perform if I have just a loop. And I can also know what I'm doing as soon as I see the, cor I see the corresponding, okay? All those new features, I, we are able to deliver them very fast in ABAP Cloud because we are able to deliver the innovations very fast. Even if you find some kind of uh, exceptional case where we may be slower because of some weird combination of, uh, of uh, properties of the tables, and I can update in the next, uh, with the next uh, ABAP Cloud update, which may not be the case to deliver, to deliver um, innovation to the on-premise scenario. So as a summary, whenever possible and when it makes sense, it may be faster to use. corresponding than using a loop. I usually get emails from developers which tell me, well, I want also that you support ranges or that you have line bindings. We have already ruled out those enhancements because it will make the uh, constructor operator look way too complicated. The use case is very specific. And as I told you before, the error handling with introduce a let's say overhead that wouldn't be that easy to optimize in all the scenarios. And what we want to deliver with this corresponding is something which you know that in 99% of the cases will be faster and you don't have to think about anything else, okay? If you want to make table bindings, you can use my friend table comprehension. So you can say, I want to build a matrix. Final means that it's immutable. Maybe we can discuss about that when in the Q&A, if anybody is interested. And I want to build a table of that type. Um, from, edit, from any single line, for every single line in that table, I want to do this mapping. But I also want to map components which are not at the same deep depth. Corresponding just allows mapping components which find themselves at the same depth. And you may even use another sources of data. Yeah. So if you want to use more than one table, or you need bindings, or you want to use ranges, the way to go is table comprehension, or you stay by the loop, because table comprehension is syntactic uh, sugar. It's not a uh, guarantee that it's faster, but it should be type safer than what you can build on the other hand side, and it should be easier to read. Easier to read, we have already seen the example that there are always people that try to, to win some kind of prize due to obfuscation, okay? So that looks easy, or at least I can give you general directions, but the problem is that sometimes our colleagues come with examples which are not that easy. Yeah? 
for example, have it. So, like, I don't know, 30 years ago, there were no table keys, and there are still plenty of people who just use standard tables with no keys whatsoever. That's extremely dangerous because we usually, as developers, tend to think we know how the data is. I always say, you have to know your data. Know your data, when I mean know your data, I mean you have to know which fields of the table may be relevant and may constitute a key. Or if you want to use filter to filter out some values, you want to know, well, I, I know that in most cases nothing will be filtered, something like that. Or you want to know if I, you, want, you, you need to push the data into the database or not. Yeah? But back then, the people just do, did things like this, yeah? which sometimes may be very fast, but it may be also very dangerous. For example, when we introduce HANA, regular databases, row-oriented databases, in some operations, like some joins or with some clauses, do not deliver sorted results because it's not in the SQL standard. And you as developers, it does not matter what, even when you do the best uh, code, uh, coding rules of the world, you may not be able to know that, know that or you may not need to do, know that. So the best thing that you can do is leave it to the compiler, use the keys. Some people tell me, well, I do not want to use keys. Yeah? Or, you know, my code is too generic, I cannot introduce keys. I know that sometimes what you are doing is migrating code. You do not always have to rewrite old code. Uh, using those new constructor operations, but um, sometimes you cannot write the code from scratch. Maybe there is a function module which has been there for line for 20 years and you cannot change the interface anymore. Yeah? So some people do th something like this. Yeah? We have the clause, the expression clause for groups of, for value. So, for example, in the node approach, what we do is we make a local copy of the table because we cannot order the, the sorting of the table. We sort it by the code that we want and we delete the adjacent duplicates. We, denormalize, we normalize the table. Yeah? <clears throat> but what's the problem? It's better that the compiler does, does that. Yeah? So we have grouping. So what you have here is I want to create a new variable which is a value, it means it's a new table, and it's creating groups. So for every single group that I can find in carriers, I want to group it by the currency code. And I'm delivering back the whole line. It's great, right? The point is that, yeah, it comes at a cost. I create new types behind these scenes, I lay a new table, and maybe even long, uh, slower than this one. You know? But it's type safer, and you do not have to worry anymore if you have already sorted the table, if it's sorted. You know? But which is the best approach to do that? You just define a new type. Let's see how the types look. You know? Standard table with empty key, and I just define a new type, which has a unique key, sorted unique key, currency code. And then instead of using the old delete adjacent or search sorting or so, uh, bi with binary search or something like that, you can use the keys. And with the keys, this, this constructor operation, it's a generic operation, so we do not know what you have to want to achieve exactly. Yeah? But we, when we use the keys, we handle the whole keys for the whole life cycle of the table. And you can use corresponding, my good old friend corresponding, with another clause, which is also which can be also combined with mapping and so ever. Yeah? And what we are telling is I want to discard, discard, to remove all the keys, all the elements which are duplicated according to the unique keys. Yeah? And see what happens. I have here more small performance measurement. Uh, okay. oh, the fine? Yes. Perfect.
we see the original code with the copy, sort, and delete adjacents. And its grouping is much slower. So as I told you before, that we have introduced new language elements which are not corresponding or filter does not mean that the results that you are getting may are always faster than something that you can build. Yeah? But it's type safe, or at least the runtime is safer than with what you can build without them. Yeah? But let's see what happens with corresponding. Corresponding is much faster than delete adjacents. So corresponding builds a completely new table instead of deleting existing lines, and it's still much faster than that deliberate adjacent duplicates. And being a constructor operator, it has another advantages, because delete just remove the lines. But when working with tables, sometimes, or when you are working for a long time with tables, they fragment, like hard drives or in other uh, uh, areas, you may also experience fragmentation. And when you are on the heavy load with the tables, we may have to uh, they fragment the tables. We have to compact the tables. With corresponding, I deliver you a brand new table which is not shared with where everything is optimum for you to keep working. Yeah? So, as advice or as a yeah, as a word of advice, you may build, you may use some of these, those new operators, but it does not mean that it will be faster. Okay, just trust corresponding and filter. But you can also build groups, adding further operations. You have to change the change, change the mindset. Usually, what you do bef did before the keys and those constructor operators is going step by step. First, I remove the duplicated entries, and then I do back a loop over all the filter elements, and then I operate over them with the constructor operator. And for groups of, you can do everything on a single operation. So you can map from different types, whereas delete just deletes from the existing type. You can add expressions, and you can perform for the calculation. So you have to change the mindset and not replacing line by line for what you are doing, but you have to change the whole algorithm, or it would be beneficial if you have a look at the operation which are performed afterwards to see if you can integrate in, the, in that uh, constructor operator. Okay. So that's what I say before that some people come to me and tell me, well, we have introduced in the coding uh, in the coding line uh, that we may only use um, new constructor operators, new ABA feature. Why? You may find cases where it may, it may be more convenient to do that, but it does not mean that you may uh, be able to perform further optimizations. Yeah? So you have to be careful when using some of the, those new features and know what is happening behind the scenes. Okay? For example, I found a guy, it doesn't mean don't, do not use it. It just, it just means you have to know which things are more time consuming than others. For example, I'm running into a case of a customer who was using CL ABAP corresponding. CL ABAP corresponding is the dynamic uh, flavor of corresponding. Dynamic means that we have a table with the strings that I have to parse in runtime. And he could have uh, built a corresponding. And I told him, well, why are you using corresponding? That is much, much slower, and in your case would be very beneficial. But he told me, well, I don't care if it takes five or 50 microseconds. It's to run a report that it takes two minutes. How is it relevant? Those 50 milliseconds that I'm losing there, and I like it better because I can go there with the debugger and set a breakpoint and change the table. So I'm not saying do not use that. I'm saying there are some uh, operations which come at a cost. If it's an important part of your uh, operation and it's a very consuming, time-consuming operation, you may want to build something on your own. But the best thing that you can do is looking for good keys, okay? Or if it's a very small operation, which is called very often. Yeah? Another point that you have to take into consideration is that you have to learn or do you have to know how to measure things. Because, for example, I have a, another case where a customer, where a developer come to me, came to me. Um, 
and has a bottleneck in the performance, and I identified several uh, uh, points when he could re uh, replace loads of assignments with corresponding. And the application went 20% faster. Yeah? And he came to me, well, but I have made a performance trace now, and now corresponding is at the top of the time-consuming operations. Yes, of course. Before, where you have the loop, it's not you won't see a loop that's it's consuming, or you won't see the, the single assignments that are that time expensive. Yeah, but you have to learn how to measure things. You know that it's a new uh, pack of operation. It's a block operations, and maybe when you measure the things, it will appear on the top. Okay. So, and the last demo I prepare for you. Easier, but. A very common question that comes to us, it's like, well, I do not want to use those read tables anymore. It looks like quite outdated. I want to have something to replace that uh, look if an entry exists. Yeah, and they do, well, before they do that, read table, carriers, whatever, transporting no fields. And it was very good. Yeah? And I told them, well, we have a built-in function which is called line exist. So you can check if a line exists or not. And it's fast. It's slightly faster than read table. And they say, well, from here to the moon, let's see what we're going to do with that. Yeah. And then he writes something like this. No, like this. Not to check if the line exists, but to return, return that line. And it's like, well, it's faster when it's considered a single, a single operation. But we do not optimize that. So what we are doing is, uh, twice as slow as what you have before with the read table, probably, or kind of uh, slightly faster than twice, but it's uh, still much slower. Because as I displayed in an earlier slide, we do not optimize some operations, and maybe you can use a help table, or maybe you can stay with read table. Okay? Or I see things like this. Filter, I want to filter from carrier everything except all entries except the entry which looks like this, right? That's much, much slower, yeah? Because filter is a constructor operator. It constructs a brand new table, and you just want to know if it's there or not. So I'm looking over a whole table, and you just want to know if it's there or not. So stay by the table. It doesn't matter. I have also a small example here, convert. So filter. Filters out all the entries of a table based on a key, which does not meet much uh, condition. That is filtered by value. You can also filter by tables, okay? And I have added here a conversion. Why is that? There is also a, car, a common support question. Why is that? Let's go to the type definition. And we see the carrier ID. is character length three. And we have written here just two letters. So as I told you before, there are always special cases where the amount of lines is very small or you do not want to filter anything at all the whole time, where maybe filter may be slightly slower than everything, something else. Sometimes, because you are not aware that some comparisons have a conversion. For example, we are here converting from a character 2 to a character 3. When there are plenty of lines, it may not matter, but when the amount of lines is very small, it may, it may make a difference. And the people come to me and open tickets, oh, I hate filter, it's very slow, look what happens here. So you have to write a conversion, if an implicit conversion should, or if a conversion is necessary, so you are aware the whole time where the performance goes, okay? And now that we have started talking about corresponding uh, filter, we are showing here another very common pattern that I found people who complain about the performance. Yeah? Corresponding and filter are constructor operators. They build new tables. Okay? So sometimes what the people want to do is, first, I want to assign all the lines of a table, maybe fields which are not relevant for the key, using corresponding, and then using filter. That is incredibly slow. 
Why? Because here you are building a table that maybe if you have uh, 1,000 lines of input, you are copying 1,000 lines to a um, temporary table, and then you are filtering it, and the worst case scenario, you are not filtering anything at all, and then you are copying again 1,000 lines, okay? So can you do that? Yes, of course. In a critical part of the code? No, please, okay? So again, if you can't use it, or if you know that it's expensive, but you find it convenient, it's enough. It's, it's okay, use it. But do not complain if it's done, it's very slow, okay? Maybe if you are lucky, and there is some kind of Spanish guy working in the kernel development, has it in this uh, to-do list, yeah? And may add a new clause eventually if he gets any time to the filter, so it can, you can do it everything at once, yeah? But right now, uh, ABAP does not uh, perform any kind of uh, return parameter uh, optimization, okay? So if you nest plenty of uh, constructor operations, it will make every single time an auxiliary variable, okay? Or if you do it the other way around, it's not that bad because you have already filtered out things. So maybe the amount of lines that we filter, that are copied with filter to that helper table is smaller and you can uh, save some copies, but it will be uh, still quite slow. So maybe if you have such a pattern, if in a, in a part of your uh, performance critical code, you can go on with just a read table, good old read table. Yeah? And it's okay to use all of uh, uh, expressions, okay? First of all, I want, oh, well, I want to thank all my colleagues who usually send me those uh, code perils, which uh, we can optimize. Guru, Carolyn, Sen, Chris, and Florent. So as a summary, what, what, what we have seen here today is the new element, language elements that we introduce are meant to use you to write better code, easier to understand, which is type safer, and in some cases, faster. There may be some usages of your code, as we have seen, that may be even uh, slower as what you had before, and it's okay. If you find any kind of weird uh, constellation when it's more uh, slower, when it shouldn't be like that, you can always contact me, and we always deliver those optimizations in the cloud, or those improvements in the cloud, which won't be maybe the case in the on-premise scenario because we cannot allow that the custom because we have introduced an optimization that we run into the risk that maybe an on-premise customer breaks something because it's a downport of a feature. And if uh, you find patterns like uh, corresponding which can be optimized or when you get a weird performance effect, you can always contact me. Mm -hmm. You can always contact me if you have further questions or remarks, okay? That should be it. I make it slightly shorter because last above conf, many people complained that it was a way too complicated, that was a brain fuck. So there are three, three very small examples that we can go back over them or answer questions regarding those constructors operators. I didn't go deep explaining the features of the, of the operations themselves because it was supposed to be an advanced uh, talk, and at least I expect that the people more or less know what we were talking about. But if you know, we can start now with the questions and answers. Where's the microphone? Oh. Uh, thank you for the presentation, Marcus. No. Uh, I have three questions. Maybe we can do in a row. If yeah. it's too much time, then we go to another colleague. Uh, the, the first one is about measuring. Usually when I do measurements, I use the transaction SAT. Yeah. Um, yeah, but how that, do you do that then for your I get running time. Do you have any other tips uh -huh. for that? Or maybe a blog? No, it's it was just for the demo because I, do, I did not want to distract you. Let me show you how I measure that. Um, uh, solution. 
Yeah, so you can... Ah, yeah, sorry, it's down there. I just, yeah, I just yeah, yeah. run it several times and it's just a single statement. Yeah. I did not want to distract the people running yeah. for the transactions, so I just display on the command line the, the duration of those single statements that I was showing to you. But, so, but in, in, in the real world, what you, do you recommend to use? To the, measure performance with the with the transaction that the is uh SAT. SAT. Yeah. okay good yeah. good because in the kernel we we log it when when we start the thing so it's uh, reliable enough you yeah? know it should be accurate enough yeah. okay good uh, the second one usually when I do a select and then I do a select into a table uh, we can create a table with this at and then the, the variable. So mm -hmm. we define the variable directly in the select. And for me to always, I, I never found the answer. Is this table always a standard table? It's always a standard table. Yeah, if you can see okay. here the examples, um, mm -hmm. if you want to use something which is sorted, you have to define the type yourself and then use that type. The inline declaration is made at convenience, and you cannot all add any kind of clause to to specify the the key. Yeah. That's what I always say: know your data. It's it worth sorting it by then select. Well, but of course, early optimization is the root of all evil. You do not have to start optimizing things before you know where your bottleneck is. So maybe to start developing, it's okay with an inline declaration, and they may, you make an assignment of the to the other table, even when you know that the table will be sorted again, and you are making a copy. But uh, it, it may be convenient using the inline declaration and not worrying about the types uh, when you, uh, until you have to fine tune the program. Okay. And the last one is just just a small one. In the uh, in these examples that we we saw in the beginning, you did uh, an appending to a sorted table should not be an insert insert. Yes, table. of course you can use an insert because it's a standard table. It's a slightly uh, no append it's for a standard table and it's a slightly faster and insert is respecting the key. But the append which will dump if you don't respect the key. Yeah, yeah, but uh, in the first examples I use the. The, um, How you sort it every time? The, the, the in the first one. example, I used a standard table, so it should shouldn't be a problem. I wanted to use the faster option, so okay. we you don't do not think that I am tricking you using something something to insert that is uh, slower. Okay, of course, you depending on which keys you have, you have to use insert or append. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but in those examples, I use it for yeah. That's okay. Shouldn't be relevant. Okay. Okay. Thank you. But, oh, no. Is this working? Ah, oh, yes. Because you, you didn't speak to the microphone, I guess. Yeah. Never mind. Uh, can you go to demo three, line 87, please? I went to see. Where's my, I'm looking for the charger. Is it, do I have here one? I brought my own, but I'm running out of juice. I won't get you off the hook. Yeah, you still have to question my answer. Um, yeah, do not go. worry. I have two kids. I'm used to difficult questions. <laughs> so, how was the question again? Sorry. Uh, yeah, maybe we first uh, navigate to line uh, 87 in demo 3. Uh, that was uh, the, um, yeah, the direct access to, to the carrier's table. And you explained if I do it, let's say twice, uh, then it's a new request. So it's exactly. a, it consumes time. I'm actually not doing the check if the line exists, but uh, what I like to do is if I take line 87, I can uh, access the fields directly. So let's say I need from this uh, line 87, uh, let's say two or three, uh, um, where did you go? So I, yeah, yeah I, I understand the question, sorry. So example, your question from, is? From this line, I need the field name and then later uh, I need the field, I don't know, street. 
then I like to write it like this. But as you're saying, there's no buffering, then it's a completely new read then. So exactly. it consu consumes a lot of time. Well, but it's, it's twice as slow, but of course you have to know if it's uh, performance relevant. But if it's performance relevant, you can always state or use a temporary variable um, and use a read table instead of transporting no fields. That was just a check if, to see if the line exists, assigning two uh, field symbol in line declaration. Yeah, yeah this is something, uh, as you said earlier, I mean, this is uh, the old style of, and uh, I think it's very nice to read to say, uh, like line, line uh, 87. Um, this is the key, and then from this line I want the name, and later I want the street. So it's very compact, I can read it very well. But then on the other hand, if it's every time a single read, then it consumes a lot of time. That's why I'm saying or mm -hmm. suggesting maybe if there was some sort of buffering, it would be great. So the compiler remembers, okay, I just read that, I just give it to you. I mean, that's what the uh, reading from the database does. Well, so th but th that would be a nice feature. Yeah, though. but. Uh, we are talking about, again, a very specific case, yeah? Because I use very simple examples, but usually after you check that something exists, you want to perform, you, you do not want just to read that field or that field of that line, you want to perform further optimization, or you want to perform further operation on that, yeah? So the point is just optimizing that very access in the, in the whole buffering, it's the, the only use case, yeah? And, it's extremely complicated to optimize that uh, use case and check that in the meantime, no other access uh, happened to that table. Because you can check if X exists, I want to uh, do another access and change the value and you have to track, track all the values that happen in this line since you make the first check uh, until the second check. That, because it's not a block operation, you may here insert all kind of uh, Weird stuff, yeah? Yeah, that's true. But as I'm saying, if I, for example, want to access from the same line like three uh, three uh, fields, then I have to copy the line to a, a new uh, a variable and then access these three fields. Whereas I, I, I use this, I can just uh, access them directly. But if you're saying there's no such option, like line 87, three times I get these three fields I need, mm -hmm. That I think that's very easy to read, but then uh, it's time-consuming. Yeah, of course, it's a trade-off. Do you want the code to be easier to read, or do you want to to be fast? Okay, performing that optimization that do suggest would be extremely complicated and would just work in very uh, uh, simple use scenarios like this one that is very specific, or you would have to track the whole time if the table has changed the line that you want to read. Yeah. So it's no problem staying with the old read table assigning, which has also the convenience now of the inline declarations, which is a field symbol, which is quite quite fast. Or it's it's not like making an assignment again. Uh, of course, of it will be always uh, possible to think of further clauses for the if exists or something like that. If exists, assign or something like that. But uh, we do not have any of like those planned so far. Speaking of assigning, you're not working with reference into, has that a, a reason? Usually when I make demos, uh, I usually use assigning because in most cases it's faster, but not always. Sometimes uh, the refer reference usually makes further uh, syntax uh, type checks, so it may be slower, slightly slower. And it's not that common. So usually people usually people use into data or into field symbol. Yeah. So and I usually use field symbol because in 80% of the cases it's faster than making a new copy within data or made uh, or than the extra type checks that a reference has. Okay. So when you were making the group by examples. Yeah. Uh, exactly. That was on a standard table. Demo to yes. So would it have benefited from being sorted or, or having keys? No. No. So that no. So there is no clause which allows you to use again uh, existing key. So if you want to, it may the else, the only performance uh, optimi or the only advantages that it has if it's the destination table has a 
a different line type or if you want to perform for the optimizations or for the operation on the line and you can uh, save the extra loop afterwards yeah. but the key is not taken into account or the sorting of the elements is not taken into account we create a hash table behind these things to with just the elements that you are specifying here to track the duplicates even if it was the key of the exactly frame. okay and we do not have any no. any uh, close to take that key into consideration because it's the despite this uh, pattern that uh, I have seen a lot with the grouping uh, grouping or the value constructor operator and the gr uh, grouping clause is a uh, general purpose clause it's not meant to to discard duplicates if you want to discard mm -hmm. duplicates try to look for a way to define a key and then use discarding duplicates yeah, okay but I was thinking about the example where you where the table rows was used afterwards mm -hmm. so to have a, a fast way of getting to that situation. No, there, no, there's no, no way. Oh, sorry. Okay. Another question over there. I had once a used filter and had a really bad experience with the performance. Mm -hmm. Maybe what is the recommendation when to use filter and what I have to take care that it's that I get a good performance or what is a contra indicator to use the filter? Well, in filter there are two there are two uh, big difference. There are filter by value and filter by table. Um, in filter by table, what, what you have to take into account is the cardinality. Uh, the point is, where are the which table has the most entries? Yeah, if the filter table or the source table. So you can plan your keys accordingly, but it doesn't matter how fast it, it is, because you may have in the source table uh, maybe thousand, thousand entries and the filter table with just one single entry. And then, it, despite it's very fast, you are looking for the whole thing a uh, thousand times. Yeah, there are also some kind of weird side effects when you are doing self assignments. Okay, because if the table is shared, there are things that happen behind the scenes with the tables that they have to copy the tables. But in most cases, when the amount of uh, um, lines is very high or is, is big, filters should be the fastest way to go. Okay. I have found in the last months a couple of uh, tickets regarding performance, and I have uh, in the last uh, release also performed some optimizations. Yeah? If you find something, so the recommendation is if it's the amount of lines is big, use filter. If it's very small, sometimes even combined with self assignment, you may build yourself your self as your self filter your own filter with the table comprehension. And if you find a very or a weird uh, performance scenario, right? Me, drop me an email. I'm an old guy. I always do the phone thing. But when I when I call young people, it's like, ooh, creep, an old guy who is using a telephone to call me. Ooh. So you can just drop me an email or open a ticket with pre very, very low, and we have a look at it. Yeah. But all those performance optimization that I may perform or may carry out won't be done ported. So if you plan, you find something which is weird, even when we optimize it, if you plan to dump port your code, maybe you you may to you may want to avoid filter up when it goes in. There's another colleague. So I have a question regarding the condition break statements which we use in ABAP, like which, which condition break statements like at new at end. So is there any corresponding new syntax for these? Because we use that day in our day-to-day -day coding to calculate the sum of the amounts in the internal table loops. No, for corresponding, there is nothing like that. OK. If you want to do something like that, there is something called let, what allows you to, I don't know what. How do you sum it in a group? Let. How do you sum it? Ah, in group by, what you can use is a generated field with the size of the groups, which is uh, here. Can you? Do, do, do. There is a close for group, which is a group size. And you get the size of every group. If you want to perform any kind of aggregation on the lines, you may want to just build your own, maybe a loop. Maybe you can use table comprehension and table comprehension. There is something called local local variables that you do let and you declare a local variable and that can you use uh, add further information. Okay. Combination of group and let. 
Uh, it, no, it, uh, let is uh, for all uh, value, opera I think for most value operations, okay? okay? So you can define in a half, in a half. Within the, the clause, you can declare a local variable that is just uh, usable within, and you can there save some further information that you have find or aggregate that. If you just want the aggregation, instead of using uh, groups, you can use the reduction. That's the reduction is a mechanism to build something from tables. But if you want to do it parallel, use that let thing, look in the documentation for let, and you can declare a local variable that can be modify every iteration of the line. Okay, thank you. In the old days of the SE80, we had a, uh, we had some performance examples where you always could throw some code and um, yeah, you, you, you could look it up. Do we have some places where I can look this examples up are there some ex performance examples for the inline for the new inline syntaxes and when will it be on github <laughs> the examples yes yeah I can these examples them. and uh, i hope many more yeah um i can upload those examples i hope that uh, despite i went quite fast and it's quite tough that uh, it was useful for you okay I always, after the, the sessions, upload all the examples uh, to GitHub or to send it to the organizer and upload it, okay? So I will uh, talk to the organizer so that they get the code. And there are no, as far as I know, there are no uh, further performance measurement transaction to, to, to display the information of the, of the single statements. And as I said, it may vary from, from, from kernel version to kernel version because we are always optimizing things behind the scenes. Yeah. Maybe you can talk to Thomas that it can be built in within the ADT, that if I have a method, then I Usually can- Usually it's the, the other way around. Side it's like, side. when is the, the compiler building something that I need to use in ADT, but I can try to talk to Thomas, he's going to be this evening there, and we can uh, have a beer with him and present our demands and wishes. And, yeah. Perfect, thank you. With, ben with ben benchmarks. Okay. You know, it's, if you find anything, uh, I always support it for the community and you just drop me an email. Okay, I have one last question, Marcos. Yeah. Uh, uh, but first, first of all, I want to thank you for your work and challenging our mindset to bring better code to the world. Mm -hmm. And the question is, uh, so these, of course, showcases, but in reality, you have to handle these um, inline codes also with the exceptions. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be really interesting for the reality code, how to cope with these um, exceptions. Uh, perhaps you can bring up uh, examples in the futures, because I think you will uh, repeat your, your session uh, mm -hmm. On different um, with you know, exceptions, session. you mean with uh, borderline uh, behavior or with real lab exceptions? Uh, no, the uh, exceptions we come from the inline expressions. Ah, like uh, uh, corresponding uh, and move found and so on. Corresponding uh, and like move corresponding should you should be able to make a try catch if there is a overflow or something it. like that. Yeah, but to see there are some examples in reality how you do the try catch and how to organize it because that makes code very complex. At the moment, you can read it very easily. Mm -hmm. It looks like the awesome clean code, but in reality, when you start with try catch, it gets really complicated. Huh? Okay. So that would no be important. interesting how you cope with it uh, from an experience point. Mm -hmm. So, as I said, there are way to. I wanted to show the different areas and I simplified the, the code a bit. Of course. Yeah. Even when it wasn't. Re where I thought it wasn't re it wasn't relevant for the for the for the yeah for the example itself yeah but uh, if true, I yeah. get that feedback I can also feel next time that I can attend anywhere example with try catch and such kind of uh, operations yeah yeah perfect thanks so that would be it 
I hope that you enjoy this format because I know it's something very specific for very maybe hardcore developers or people that are very uh, interested in the software development instead of migration or porting things into another system, which is 80% of the use case. And I hope see you everybody soon. If you have comments or requests, or you can always drop me an email. Okay.